everybody out here quitting Yu-Gi-Oh because of a thousand dollar meta decks. Let's dive on into it, shall we? By the way, I got you a dollar. I just forgot my wallet. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living, very cold 55 degree boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I hope y'all having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for all of the kind words that y'all have been leaving me with your spirit bomb energy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, didn't see my community post, my aunt passed away. Uh, was quite close with her and um, she passed away due to cancer. And of course, your boy being on his own cancer journey definitely is a, a bit of a gut punch, uh, which is also why I wrote my book, uh, Shameless Plug, even though that feels kind of a weird segue, but um, I haven't talked about it in a while, but yes, believe it or not, <laughs> don't judge a book by its cover. I actually did write a book about my diagnosis and in hopes of inspiring others that may be going through a tough time in their life. So link below in my description, uh, in the description box, <clears throat> uh, half of all profits go towards the VHL Alliance. So thank you so much for all the support. So, <clears throat> if I could clear my voice today, we got to talk about these $1,000 Yu-Gi-Oh! Meta decks because I'm seeing a bunch of people quitting the game and saying, I'm going to Master Duel, <laughs> as if that's supposed to be better, uh, instead of spending $1,000 on paper play Yu-Gi-Oh! as a dog barks in the background. But... <laughs> Here's the thing that I think a lot of people aren't realizing, and I've even heard people like Robbie Cole say, this is like Teledad format again, where it's $1,000. It's very different from that. Um, the thing is with Teledad format, for those of you who haven't been playing for 16 years like your boy has, um, Teledad was a tier zero deck that you had to play like two to three copies of Dark Arm Dragon that were 250 bucks a piece. You had to play that deck. If you were not playing that deck, you were not playing the game. Like, that's just how it was back then. Granted, things were ran by upper deck and whatever. But regardless, we had short printing then. Things were expensive, right? And if you wanted to be guaranteed to get your invite at a regional or to top at the time, what was SJC's, then you were spending like another one, two to $3,000 on a crush card virus, which was a prize card at the time, because I don't think the duelist Pat Kaiba was out. So you really didn't have a way to get the card outside of getting the prize card. And so what a lot of people aren't realizing is the fact that even though this deck is a thousand dollars, people aren't actually spending a thousand dollars. If you think about it, technically. And on top of that, it's not a tier zero deck. Fire Kings, which is the $1,000 deck, let's just be honest here, is a good deck, but it's not going to be tier zero. It's definitely going to be tier one post Phantom Nightmare. And yes, things like Bonfire are going to be expensive, but this is pre-sale prices. You know, it's going to maybe settle around $30, $40, maybe $50 if things really go wild, $80. But that's like if every deck plays it as a three of. Sorry about that, you guys. That dog was pissing me the hell off. So let's continue our conversation about this deck, shall we? So the thing is, is that back in Teledad format, you know, you had to play the deck or else you were going to be losing, right? Well, even though the deck is probably going to be $1,000, you have to keep in mind that we are in the pre-sale prices right now. Bonfires may not be played as a three of. It's going to be maybe a $30, $40, $50 card. If everybody plays it as a three of, then yeah, it's going to be 80 bucks. But it's a hard once per turn activation and it adds you a level four or lower pyro. It's not any fire monster. So obviously, like, you know, you want to go bonfire, get the populace. And then as I was telling our homie Valley D last night, you might as well put that quote on, on your Tindo profile because bonfire find a pop that's just gets you everything you know it's the new two things equals full orcas combo you know uh jello and i don't know alcohol equals full orcas combo crown royale and coke full orcas combo you know lotion in my body hair is full orcas combo <laughs> like it's it's that good right but if it's not going to be played as a three of, then the price is going to drop. Right now, every the, the whole set of Maze Millennia is on pre-sale. So like transaction rollbacks over a hundred bucks, bonfires over a hundred bucks. So everybody's like, oh no, it's going to be, you know, uh, over a thousand dollars, blah, blah, blah. What people don't think about is the fact that that's if you don't have anything, right? Like if you don't have Ash, if you don't have Imperm, you don't have Drolls, you don't have these things available to you, then yes, you are in theory spending $1,000, maybe a little bit less here and there with prices fluctuating, or if you just go and get three Fire King structure decks at your local Walmart, and then you buy singles online, right? 
but you don't have to play that deck, unlike something like Teledad or any other tier zero deck. You know, you can play something that's transaction rollback related once the price of transaction rollback, you know, drops. I've seen people play testing with tier element and turning it into basically a DPE style deck with like three copies of transaction rollback because you mill so much. You know, you could use something, I don't know if I'd really recommend this, but you could play something like Needlebug Nest, which mills the top five cards of your deck. It's a trap card, granted, but you mill the top five, maybe hit some tier monsters or some Destiny heroes. You get access to Beatrice or two level sixes. You dump the transaction rollback or the Mayakashi trap. The opponent can't special summon. You're sitting there whipping out your diddly proceeding to play with yourself, asking, asking the opponent if they're going to finish that pizza. You don't have to play this deck as good as it is. Keep in mind that Bonfire does lose to Droll. You know, a lot of people were saying before um, we even got Maze of Millennia spoilers and stuff like, oh, Droll's not going to be that good, blah, blah, blah. Droll's going to be very good this format, I reckon, because, you know, they go Bonfire, search for the populace, and it's like, Okay, but the pop this is going to activate on a new chain. You're going to chain the droll. Like, how do you play at that point? Oh, well, I've got call by. Okay, you had the one of, like, congratulations. Like, go touch grass. Like, it's, it's kind of whatever at that point, right? So if you already have some of these staples available to you, you're not necessarily paying $1,000. You're probably paying six to 700 depending on what you need. But the price will drop because of that. Now, you might be thinking, oh, Avery, I've got some staples. Yeah, I'm not paying 1000 I'm paying 900 now. Look. I get that, but because of the fact that if you assumingly have access to these other staples, you're going to be able to play different decks. You know, even post Phantom Nightmare, the the, the format's still going to be diverse. It's just we're going to see a higher percentage of Fire Kings and Rescue Ace taking up chunks of, you know, deck breakdowns and big events. You know what I mean? And the deck is not like absolutely god tier like there are ways to stop it you know going into this new format we're going to be seeing the game of 4d chess play where people may play nib to stop fire kings but then they can play through it if they go down the right combo line if they suspect nib but then if they don't suspect nib because people aren't playing it because they'd rather just break the board then they're going to go down a different combo line so it's going to be this game of 4d chess where like do you have the nib or not so nib is obviously going to be something very good to play as well and the thing is, is that people saying that they're going back to Master Duel, and I saw one player, I think his name was Blackhawk, has about 2,000 subscribers. He actually got very emotional talking about how the deck was, a, that Yu-Gi-Oh! is just so expensive and doesn't, he doesn't like how they're doing product and wants to go to Master Duel instead, aka Master Shits. Master Shits is not any better, I'm just being honest with you, because they release cards at such weird times and it's a best of one format and it sucks, you're still paying for cards like... You know, this isn't like the DS games back in the day where you could throw in a Game Shark and have access to three of every card in the game. And to say that you're going to Master Shits is still supporting Konami if you're saying you don't want to support Konami. And to the people who are quitting the game because of these $1,000 decks, you know, if you think, well, Avery, I don't have access to a bunch of cards, you know, whatever. I say this all the time in my videos. And raise your hand and leave a like on the video if I've said this because I know for a fact I've said this. This is why I say... Look at the trends in the OCG, or I say, hey guys, looky here, we're going to have this shit in three to four months, get your shit now, like, this is why players like me, Robbie Cole, whoever you watch, say, hey, keep an eye on this sugar boo bear, because it's going to come here to the TCG eventually, and if you don't know where to look, Road of the King, or was it Road? Yeah, Road of the King .com. You can look at the OCG meta trends. You click on the meta game tab. There you go. There's your info. Oh, hey, what's this bonfire card that we're getting in three to four months? Oh, it's really good in Fire Kings. I should probably pick this stuff up and hold it so that I'm ready. Oh, we're getting Snake Eye stuff and Dia Bell Star and Age of Overlord. I'm going to scoop that up so I can play Fire Kings in a couple of months. Now, when it comes to the product thing. Um, this is more indirectly to Blackhawk's point. I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, yes, Konami's product releases have been very strange lately. You know, if you remember, we used to get about three to four month release points. Now we're on like two months, maybe. Like we get Maze of Millennia, which granted that's a side set, but still we get that what, January 19th? And then not even a month later, February 9th, we're getting Phantom Nightmare. And then like two, two and a half months after Phantom Nightmare, we get Legacy of Destruction, which has like all the Yugi stuff and the other Dia Bellstar stuff I haven't even talked about yet. They literally have a card in there called Snake Eyes Dia Bellstar. Like that's like making a card called Dogmatica Fallen of Albaz. Like it's insane. And so this is a perfect example of, hey, stuff is high right now. Look at what's in Legacy of Destruction so that you can save, you know, even $5 a week. 
to get that stuff. You know, let's say that in four months, we know that we're getting something and you start saving $5 a week. Let's say on the fourth month it comes out, that's three months, you're saving $5 a week, that's $60. And it just goes up from there. If you save $10 a week, 20, $25 a week, wherever the case may be. This is also why too, I say that uh, I buy whatever deck I wanna play, whether I do good or bad at an event, I turn around and I sell it to the vendors. You know, yeah, you can try and haggle with players, 85% TCG player price, blah, 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 sell it off. And, you know, maybe you break even or lose only $2 in the process. I'd rather go to the vendors because I don't want to have to haggle with Yu-Gi-Oh players like that. I'd rather stick my head in a toaster. That's just aggravating. I may lose 5 to $10 at the end of the transaction, but I can make up 5 to $10 out of my bank account compared to like spending 900 and then not selling anything and losing my ass on it after a ban list. You know, I, I'll fully admit, I paid $700 for Zodiac when it was tier zero. I still have a video up on the channel where I spent $99.99 on three copies of Zodiac Barrage on TCG Player at like 10 o'clock at night. And I lost over half my money easily. It took me a while to recover from that. Was that a bad investment? No, it was a tier zero deck. I wanted to play the best deck but I had to make the decision to buy it at that price. If you're making the decision to spend $130 on a copy of Bonfire, that's on you, Sugar Boo Bear, and you should not be doing that. You need to wait for the prices to drop because again, these are pre-sales. They usually tend to drop after the fact. And so if you already have some of the cards to play with, then you're not spending as much. There's always, usually, budget options. I shouldn't say always, but there are usually budget options to different decks. You don't necessarily need the Snake Eyes cards. Does it make them a hell of a lot better? Yes, the deck is a lot better with them, but you don't necessarily need them if you are absolutely on a budget and you want to be competitive. And again, you have different options with different decks. And if if you can't afford it, again, you know, if you're like, listen, this deck is 500 bucks. I, I have the money for it but I don't want to lose all my money. Again, this is where you can go to the vendors, sell it. You know, let's say they give you 450. Okay, you lost 50 bucks. You can make that up, you know, at your nine to five or whatever the case may be. You know, luckily for me, which granted I am a uh, outlier in this where I've made some good investments in the stock market, I can kind of take the hit on certain investments in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh and not really worry about it. You know, if you remember, I made that video where I bought the 25th anniversary booster boxes that I'm going to hold them for five to 10 years and make money. Like that's just all but guaranteed. But not everybody can take that hit, even if the boxes, some of them are like 35 to $45 a piece. Um, but not everybody can do that, right? And I understand that. So not everybody is the outlier like me uh, whenever my money isn't going towards my medical bills and cancer treatment and stuff like that to where I have a little bit of spending money. So it really is about budgeting. It comes down to staying in the know. It comes down to looking at what other options you have so that you're not intimidated by a $1,000 Yu-Gi-Oh deck price because I get it's intimidating. I've been there when I was 12 years old in 2009 and Teledad was running around like crazy and I was getting my butthole just absolutely destroyed with no lube and no consent by these $1,000 plus dollar Teledad decks and crush card viruses up everybody's ass. Like, I get it. I really do because I've been there. And I hope that this can at least bring some solace to some people so that they don't feel like they have to quit the game. But don't go to Master Duel uh, out of, I hate how the paper game is and I'm going to this. Because again, you're still supporting Konami and you're supporting a bad game that's honestly worse than the real game. I'm just being honest with you. So guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Is there any points that I've missed talking about this? Um, I'd love to see what y'all think in the comments below. You know, it's good to take a break from the game, but don't fully quit. There are other options out there that I think people should take advantage of and think about. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.